Mm -hmm. Are we on? You're on. <laughs> Attendees are uh, entering. You'll see there. I'm going to oh. pull up the chat so I can see if people. Oh, wait, I have to pull up the um, Q&A. So I read that um, morning doves are closer to a carrier pigeon, like the kind of pigeon that was extinct, that went extinct in New York than actual pigeons are. Yeah. Isn't that incredible? When you read it, there were tons of them, carrier yeah, They like blackened the sky yeah. and they were so gentle that they got hunted to extinction. What happened? Oh, oh, hunted. Did they eat, did eat people eat them? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm. There was also a parakeet in, uh, it was the only native parrot in America, the Carolina parakeet. Really? Extinct. Because people ate them? Googling. I think that they were considered pests, I think, but I'm not sure. So, yeah. That's horrible. They're so beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Oh, but you know, yeah, they were incredibly beautiful. But also parakeets, there were parakeets in Central Park because so many people have had parakeets that fly out the window and they fly around and they look for an area that might be a good greenery, like nest area. And so they, I've seen them in Central Park. It, there's flocks of them. I mean, I've never seen a flock, but there are enough parakeets that they decided, well, I guess we'll live here. There's some in Greenwood Cemetery a lot. <sighs> Maybe parrots, they're really, they're big, they're green. Is that a parrot? Yes, yes, there's, a, I think, a Quaker parrot in Brooklyn that, um... What? A Quaker parrot? Quaker parrot. <laughs> Yes, Quaker parrots. It's a, <laughs> it's a type of bird. It's, I just got it. When did you get into birds? When, I, I had parakeets when I was a kid. Oh, I didn't know that. So, yeah, I guess from uh, when I was about nine. And, uh, they were about as high up on the pet chain as my parents would let me go. Because <laughs> we lived in an apartment. And uh, I really had to work for that key. But, yeah. Yeah, it's got yeah. a lizard. You had you a did. Oh, Scott did. Oh, sorry. Who's Osprey. Yeah, a lizard. Osprey? No, just lizard. Oh, lizard. I thought you said his name <laughs> was Osprey, and I thought that's a good name for a He's off. He's off screen. Oh, you know, off screen. I'm not showing him because it's <laughs> horrible. Somebody says, Roz, I saw your show in SF, San Francisco, oh. at the Contemporary Jewish Museum a few years ago. I loved it. Somebody said. Oh. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, they did a they did a really nice nice job. Can we see who's the we all saw in in like in New York, right? It's the same show. Uh, similar. They ver each place installed it a little bit differently and emphasized different things. And we had special sort of things that they built or made, and you know it was interesting. Similar overlap, but yeah. You know. Where is it now? Um, it is now, most of it is at my uh, gallery, but it is uh, coming back to me because my gallery is closing. Is so, your gallerist all right? What? No. Uh, my gallerist was uh, the wonderful Renato Dinesi. He passed away in February of oh. liver cancer, not um, coronavirus. That's too bad. Yeah. Sorry, Ross. Yeah. How are you guys coping with this pandemic? I'm great. <laughs> yeah, it's not much different, right? Yeah, I mean, when people, I don't like that people are, I, yeah, I'm great, like, on this very small level of liking to stay home. I'm not great in that I'm rejoicing that people are, people I know are dying and stuff. That's horrible. Yeah. How, are you, how are you? Uh. Same. I mean, it, it's nice to be home and just having all this time. Um, yeah. yeah. I, I'm getting a little stir crazy. Yeah. It's nice not to have to balance the, like, the need to stay home in order to work and the constantly being expected to go out and promote the work. That's always hard to do both. Yeah. But do you feel that it's sort of, there's a different vibe in the air in the last, you know, since the weather's turned warmer, maybe yeah. a tiny, tiny bit more. A little more pressure. A little more, well, more stuff, more stuff going on. And, 
Yeah, things are opening up a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm like saying, starting to say no to people asking me to hang out, which is stressful. I was, I think it was really nice to not have even the temptation. Yeah. I don't really, I'm, I don't trust people to keep six feet from me. Yeah. It's weird. Well, um, are, are you guys like, I'm not, I mean, for the first month or so, I was doing cartoons about the pandemic and the New Yorker bought a couple, but then now I'm, I'm like, I don't know what to draw about. I don't know whether to draw about the pandemic anymore. Yeah. Or I should I go back to normal life and normal Do cartoons? you want to go back to normal life, but feel pressure to draw about the pandemic? Or the other way around. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I feel like I think about it so much. Um, and I tend to draw what I think about, for better or worse. So I do think a lot about the pandemic. And um, I think because part of my life has always been um, New York, you know, and I miss it a lot. And I worry about what's going to happen and you know that just is a whole ball of wax for me so right. yeah and it's it's just weird it's weird to not i i feel like i should not be thinking about it so much and i should try to think about other things but it seems to sort of have um it 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 affects everything i think about if i don't think about it then okay i'm thinking about uh, let's say I'll think about my birds and then I realize I'm out of parrot seed and then it's like, oh, should I go to the pet store? Maybe I don't want to do that because then I have to, you know, go inside. And, you know, so it's just like every little uh, thing or, um, you know, oh, maybe I'll take a walk with my friend. Oh, the last time he came to my town. Now I have to go to his town, but that means I have to get in my car and drive to that town and I don't really want to, do that because I don't like to drive. So, you know, it just seems that even if I'm not thinking about it in some way, it sort of works its way in there and, you know, it's impacted every aspect of my life. So. I feel the opposite. I feel guilty that I'm not thinking about it enough and or drawing about it enough. I guess I'm, I'm existing in it, but I don't, yeah. I'm, I don't know. Maybe we need to find some, happy middle ground or something. I don't know. But I, I wish I didn't think about it as much. I, I think I think about it. I'm like thinking about grief and I'm thinking about salt. Like I'm thinking about the tendrils that come out of this, but I'm not think I'm not able to think about, I don't know, like the grocery shop. Ooh, there's a bird fight out my window. <laughs> Ooh. Bird fight. Someone won. <laughs> yeah I don't like I'm not able I, f I feel like I'm not able to say anything worth saying about it and I don't know where that feeling comes from yeah I don't I don't think oh uh, I don't know I mean a lot of times with work I think about something that um uh a friend of mine who's a writer said that there's always this constant you are not worthy voice, you know? It's like nothing. I, I mean, I, I think I've known forever that nothing I have to say is worth saying. Uh, as people have said it before and they've said it way better. There's a lot of people who are just a lot smarter and more perceptive and more original than I am and skills like let's not even go there. Blah, 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 blah. Um, but this friend of mine said, that what he does when he's writing is that he tells that voice to just shut up until he finishes working. Right. When, when he's finished, you know, the voice can like attack him while he wants. So I've heard that from other writers, like go sit in the corner, that voice goes sit in the corner and wait. Yeah, go sit in wait. the corner. Yeah. I'm not trying to get rid of you. I know I can't. I know, I know you're right. You know, mm -hmm. I know you're right. I agree, but just shut up until I finish this and then, you know, fine. So, I don't know. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, I think for me, the, so much of this plays into my my own paranoia is that, you know, about illness and um, sickness, oh, yes. you know, and just various fears. Uh, I don't know. Um, 
That's sort of your thing, Roz. You're sort of a neurotic, uh, a neurotic Roz. <laughs> <laughs> kind of, kind of my, In yeah. Your- I don't, I don't, I, it's less, it's easier than, you know, talking about politics or something. I mean, because politics, I definitely feel like I'm out of my depth. I, I don't really, you know. Um, this feels like politics to me. Like the when I try to draw about this, it feels like trying to draw about politics and I feel n- un- less informed than the average person. About politics? Yeah, and yeah, about too. the virus. Well, you got you got to work at it. I mean, I, I do too, but I but I know that you are you, informed. You guys, you guys, your work is like more inner directed, correct me if yeah. I'm wrong. And mine more more outwardly directed, so I mm-hmm. tend to focus on outward stuff and then Try to work it into a cartoon. Do you read the news in the morning? Yeah. Is it, um, do you like take notes while you're reading? Sometimes. I haven't lately, but uh, that's how I used to draw cartoons. Like I'd have this big piece of paper on my desk and I'd get the news back when there were, you know, paper newspapers, get the newspaper and just go through it and pull out words and, and trends and stuff like that. Oh, that's a text just coming in. Um, and then I, so I have this big piece of paper with lots of words and trends or just thoughts that come to my head and then doodles. And so it all, and then randomly they come into a cartoon, hopefully that's the idea. So the news like is a part of that mix for me. Yeah. But you guys are, I mean, you don't, do you look at the news when you first, first start working in the morning or no? No. I've yep. never learned how to read any. I read the headlines always. Yeah, but... same, same. Read the headlines. Yeah. But we, I mean, I, my attention gets sometimes grabbed by stuff that is just so stupid that, you know, it's like, what? Somebody saw a UFO in Arizona? And then, you know, I'll, I can tell you everything that you need to know about what happened there. But um, you know, meanwhile, well, that's so that's so 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 like you. It's like your humor is like that. It's just what I'm following. I mean, otherwise, what's really what's the point? You know, this is all, the only thing I've ever. If I'm going to draw cartoons, I'm going to draw what I want to draw about. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, otherwise, why why? <laughs> it's not like um <laughs> i don't know uh there's really no other reason uh, um. let's see if we have any questions hey i should tell the people um that they could uh there's a there's a q and a thing at the bottom of your screen if you want to ask questions we'll answer them here and there just put them in the q and a part um Somebody, Nina, who asked you about or told you about the, your show, Ross, said they like my five o'clock drawing. So I'm the one way I'm dealing with this pandemic is drawing live at five o'clock every day on Instagram, and I just I just doodle about or draw something about the pandemic and randomly talk to the people that are watching. It's, it's fun. I'm kind of running out of ideas. <laughs> <laughs> What else? Oh, here's a question. Okay. What do each of you believe were pivotal steps throughout your life in growing your sense of humor, senses of humor? Pivotal steps. Pivotal steps. Uh, I think probably being born to the parents that I was born to. So that was a big one. Um, you know. Uh, Explain. Um, they were clowns. They were they, they were circus clowns, but basically, um, they were they thought that they were uh, teachers in the New York school city uh, public school system, but actually they were circus clowns. And we just walked around the apartment with big horns and tripping each other and batting each other over the head with frying pans and very uproarious. Um, my mother had a rolling pin that she used to hit my father over the head with. It was really funny. And um, we were always leaving pies out on the windowsill for hobos, which was really strange because we were on the second floor. So the hobos would have to climb up the side of the building to get the pies, but (laughs) it worked. 
It is was. this your next memoir? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> 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 just kidding. This is the real story. Yes, this is the real story. That other story was just some made up crap. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, it was really funny. We just laughed. We laughed all the time. I mean, sometimes, sometimes my mother would rig up the TV so that my father and I would get like electric shocks when we turned it on. Oh, it was just a panic. It was so good. Um, I miss those days. So, yeah. yeah. You married a clown, didn't you, Rose? I was a, what? I was a clown? You married a clown though, right? Didn't I you? married a clown, yes. And my children are both clowns and we're carrying on the clown tradition here. So. Are you a clown? I'm, of course I am. <laughs> Good. I do a lot of tricks with thread. Um, I, uh, it's like you've heard of balloon animals. I make thread animals. <laughs> And uh, if you just wait about 45 minutes, I'll make a dog out of this piece of thread. It'll be very tiny. Um. Ta-da! Yeah, I think parents, I think parents okay, are like, my, my parents was, were also important. Like, they weren't clowns, but they were, they were funny. Yeah. They liked funny. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, but they were important. They were, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's, I think, yeah, growing up, um, yeah. So. Leanna, do you have, you, I mean, I, I'm not the moderator here, but I, I feel like I, I'm supposed to be. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm, I'm really bad with Zoom. I'm always afraid of not being loud enough for the computer to pick me up, so I tend to be very quiet. Uh, sound great. Thank you. Yeah, um, um, we're I, talking to other people when you can see yourself. I'm having issues yes. with that. I can't. I try not to look at myself. It's too horrible. I, know. I look at other people. I, you know, this is, I, I dyed my hair. Well, this is, I would never mind. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Um, me funny. Uh, was I a funny kid? I wasn't. I was about as funny as I am now. I don't consider myself like utmost funny in my, uh, me, in me, the funny isn't the main thing, but um, the angry is and Ooh. the weird is and the fun, like the like slightly different perspective, yes. Um, angry. Was I always angry? I think I got angry in sixth grade or so. I was, I always drew and then I started, you know, I think I always drew kind of mean cartoons, but it was a way of like, is that funny when you're mean? I, I was mean. Related. Did you ever get in trouble? Yeah, I got in big, well, actually I didn't get in trouble when I was, I did like, I had this, this great triumph in, Gosh, was it, I guess it, was it seventh grade? I think it was seventh grade. It's so weird that I can't remember, sixth or seventh grade. I I had this like cartoon strip about this really mean teacher and she, like this horribly mean old school teacher who like stopped just short of hitting us. She was very grumpy. Um, and I made this like funny, nasty, comic strip about her that was circulated around the middle school and it was a huge success and then um I got found out and and I, I didn't get found out the like the movement I had built around her got found out I actually left soap on her chair um, and she found it and she got very angry and no one told on me but like the guilt kind of ate me up I wish they I wish I had gotten in trouble and like seen that it wasn't so bad and kept doing it but but I stopped at that point I, so, I tried I so hard not to be mean after that why did well I've met many many questions about the why soap um it was actually soap mixed with butter Oh, oh, it was like a puzzle of stuff. Yeah, like, now it makes like sense. A bar of <laughs> yeah, not a bar of stuff. <laughs> like, okay. It was, it was me being weird. It was me like, I guess funny. Like, I, I think I always thought it was funny, but it was always seen as weird. So I stopped thinking of it as funny. Like for, I had a plastic baggie. I don't remember why. I think it, 
maybe it came with the butter. I had the butter from the school lunch, which was so disgusting. And I was like, how can I make this more disgusting and hilarious? And I put liquid, like the, the fetid liquid soap from the bathroom that always smelled rotten yeah well in there and I mix it up and I was like this is the grossest thing in the world isn't this hilarious and then I realized that no one at my suburban school thought this was hilarious at all they just saw how weird I was and I was like how can I make this seem like I'm being naughty and not weird and so I put it on her chair do you know what's so weird I had a very, very similar thing happen with a teacher in seventh grade. I can't believe this. This is so weird. It's probably the same teacher. Yeah, it could be. Maybe her sister her, yeah. or her mother. Cause she was like this old lady who wore like big, big, like your mom, big, big shoes yeah. and like a long black dress. She was, front, she was a Holocaust survivor, which oh. is such a great reason to be grumpy. Yeah. Like, teacher like. Well, Mine was not that. Mine was a young woman, and she was very, very pretty, and she had red hair that she wore in some sort of concoction on her head, and she dressed sort of fashionably, and she wore heels, and all of the um, popular girls liked her, and she loved all the pretty popular girls, and I was just too weird, you know? It was like well, that thing, and you know when you're that age that you're just kind of not there, not getting what's going on at all and uh i it was when we started because we didn't we you know in junior high was when we started changing classrooms so for me it was seventh eighth and ninth grade and i had a memo pad where i wrote down homework assignments and i sometimes doodled in it and i accidentally left the memo pad behind and in it was a doodle of this teacher and uh we, I was also, it was the, the beginning of chemistry and I made up a compound, which was two parts something plus two parts uh, something else equals, and I had her name. Oh, and the doodle it was her. She was like this horrible looking weird robot kind of cre creature. And it was one new compound, hot tear, get it? Like hot air, um, but it was H-O-T hyphen T-A-R-E, which I just thought was a scream. And she found it. And uh, it was very bad. I mean, she, um, she told the principal who contacted my parents and she told the principal that she thought I ought to see a psychiatrist. <laughs> and um, I had to meet with her and both of my parents and they had to get out work to come. And it was my mother, for once in her life, she really took my side. My mother was an assistant principal and she said, if you are gonna get bent out of shape by this little seventh grader in your honors English class doing a doodle of you, you should not be teaching in the New York City public school system. Good mom, wow. Yeah, and, yeah. and she backed down. She still didn't like me. And you know, her, her acolytes didn't like me either because I had sort of taken a stand against her. Mm -hmm. But you know, that's school. That's like the awfulness of like not knowing the winning side, not understanding how to play it, you know? Yeah, I just, I was not weird no, so much as just, I just stayed out of everything. I just stayed off to the side, like quiet drawing by myself. Nobody noticed me. I'm, I'm not here. I'm just drawing. Don't, don't pay attention. Yeah, don't, just don't look over here. Just yeah, don't right, look. exactly. Don't look over here. I'm busy. I'm drawing. I'm busy. I'm drawing. Just, that's, mm -hmm. yeah. Are you from DC? Yeah. Yeah. Did you grow up like in the city? No, and right right on the border, like Maryland, right near the, the line. Did you hate school or like it okay? It was fine. I didn't hate it. I wasn't very good at it. But I got like by the time by the time um mi middle school, high school rolled around I was I was like drawing a lot so I got I got uh, peer uh, accolades for that like she's the one that draws isn't that cool so I felt I felt fine about that I got that young and then it kind of went away as other people learn how to draw and then like the idea of what good drawing was shifted and became like academic drawing and I felt left behind I never liked the art classes I never wanted to be in the art classes I didn't want to compete with that at all. I just did my own thing. Yeah. 
All art classes can be really weird. Yeah. Roz, did you take art classes? I did. I liked the high school ones were fine because it was public high school and a lot of people were just taking that class because it was an easy class. And uh, my teachers liked me because I was serious about it and most of their students weren't. Um, when I went to art school, it was different. Um, yeah, you like had, you went to, you went to a fancy schmancy art school, right? Uh, yeah, I went to Rhode Island School of Design, RISD. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was the first time I really became aware of how many really good people there were out there, like really people who really could draw and were smart and were really wonderful artists. And uh, I think it prepared me for making a career as an artist more than if I hadn't gone through there, you know, because by the time I graduated, I knew that I wasn't the only one who drew, you know, everybody at RISD drew. We were almost all like the kid in the, cl in the class who drew. And I feel like, did RISD like try to keep you away from applied art or from like actual, like working as an artist somehow? I don't think that they, no, they were, they were pretty indifferent to what I did. I think I was pretty, uh, you know, I, I didn't, um, I wasn't, I, I was pretty low on the list of priority students there. You know, if there were kids in the class who were important, who were going to be taken under the wing by certain teachers or encouraged or discouraged. I was not one of those kids, you know, I was just kind of like filler or whatever. Did you take mostly painting? I started out in graphic design to be practical uh, and I was horrible at it. It was just fucking nightmare. I mean, sorry. Uh, it was just no. awful. Um, I was really bad at it. Um, and uh, then I took um, illustration which was okay, but it was boring. And, uh, and then I graduated in painting. Um, so I kind of went through a lot of different things. Lana, have you ever painted? Are you, do you do that? Do you work in any other medium? I, I effing hate painting. I, I don't know why I do. I think I'm very, I'm a very like weird learner. And I think I know I haven't tr like banged my head against certain media enough to learn how to do them. But like, I get so frustrated when I, when I try to paint, I tried, I did it a bunch in college and my paintings were so weird. I'm, I don't know, I preferred drawing. I wasn't great at like academic drawing either, but I preferred it. And I've always, I don't know, I loved actually filming. I, I wanted to do that for a while in college and then I, I was too um, socially weird. I realized I would have to work with other people and I just couldn't do it. And then I switched to design. Live action or animation type filming? Just like filming. I like borrowed it. I loved borrowing the school's camera. When it came time to like get my own camera, I bought this like like a hoax camera off the internet that was sixty dollars and it came and it was that big <laughs> and I didn't know that's, how to do it. that's so funny yeah it was like it was like a trait like a party favor or something oh my god oh my god disappointing yeah Did you what? ever get into photography I don't I don't know it's like I guess it's similar feeling to like making art about pandemic like I'm like, what, not, there's nothing that's set that. What was Ooh, that? Did you hear that? Oh, it's, it's seven o'clock, it's seven o'clock. <laughs> but that was a gunshot. No. <laughs> or no, something. I heard that. Or fireworks. Heard fireworks, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we're getting into fireworks season. What? <laughs> 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 right, July 4th, oh, right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I feel if you're a good photographer and I'm not a good photographer. Do you, do you like taking photographs? 
I do. I, I used to do it in college. I, I took a lot of photography. I loved it. And I learned how to yeah. develop it and all that. I love that. I don't do that anymore, but. Did you, uh, that, were you even an art major in college? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you study different kinds of art? Barely, you know, they, I went to a small college, so they let me do what I want wanted within within reason like I had to take a certain number of credits but um so I, I did some painting but I wasn't very good at it um later on I tried painting I like watercolor and I like painting on paper but I don't I tried oil painting but it it's just doesn't it just doesn't work for me watercolor is pretty fun I like watercolor too oil painting I feel great while I'm I always felt great while I was doing it like like so powerful and like I can move this like paint that's already on the canvas but it always looks so it's that weird disconnect and it looks so look bad at, after. Look at these brushes somebody gave me. I mean I, that's one thing I like about painting is the brushes. They're all so cool. I have that's a really good brush. They look very like haircuts or something. Yeah this one has COVID hair. Yeah <laughs> I mean they look kind of like if you painted little faces on the yeah and, that's and that's what you would do, yeah. Yeah, that's what I would do. Ah! <laughs> Good question, let's see. <laughs> um, what's the first thing you guys are going to do once it's safe to go out again? Mm -hmm. Huh? What is the mat? The mat. Oh. How much? I'm, I'm just going to walk around New York, huh? I miss the subway, weirdly enough. I know, me too. Yeah. There was a video recently on, I think it was on uh, Instagram or, or TikTok, of these guys doing their dance on the subway with all the um, the poles. And they, they swing around the poles and they, they hang. Oh. And, I, and, and there was nobody else in the car except for these dancers. And yeah. I was watching it. I was like, oh, I miss, even though when they're doing it and I, it's a crowded subway, I'm really kind of annoyed by it and frightened by it. But yeah. Great to see you don't them. want them to hit anybody accidentally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I just miss being on the train and looking at all the people, people you know? yeah. and I miss, I miss that. I miss the density of the people and yeah. And also, I mean, I hate, 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 hate driving. So for me, one of the most wonderful things about the city in my top five things that I love about the city is that I never, ever, ever have to drive and it's not just like oh how great i can go from like 23rd street to 73rd street. no you can go everywhere you can go out to flushing you can go to the beach you can go to the botanical gardens you can go everywhere by subway mm -hmm. and you can decide okay today i'm going to explore this neighborhood and then you can just go and it's the best thing in the world uh, you don't need a car. Uh, so yeah, I, that's, that's something I miss. I said, what uh, are you going to do? Oh, I can't wait to go back to New York, like Roz. Um, I'm in upstate New York right now. And what's the first thing you're going to do? Just walk around New York. Yeah. Just walk and look at you the You think people. that you're going to, oh, some, there's something here. It says from Patricia. Yep. Well, A lot of questions. Um, Roz, would you talk a bit about your book? Can we talk about something more pleasant? Oh. It helped cheer. It helped and cheered me enormously dealing with my elderly parents as an only child. Thank you. Uh, That's a great book, Roz. Wow. Thanks. Thank you. Um, that is a book I wrote a few years back about my parents' last ten years or so of their lives and my um, sort of coming back into them coming back into my life and my coming back into their lives in a way that I had not really thought about. I can't really say I didn't anticipate it because I think in the back of my mind, I knew that someday as an only child, that unless you know a grand piano dropped out of the sky and both of my parents at the same time, um, I was going to be to some extent involved in their caretaking when they became more dependent. Um, but 
I did not know, it was all, it was all very abstract until it wasn't. And then when it wasn't abstract anymore, that was really what the book is about. And it's also, as I was writing it, I realized, you know, that I, I needed to give it some context. So, you know, I mean, I really, we really had not, I went off to college when I was 16. Um, because not because I'm such a smarty, but because the way of the way of New York school system works is that basically in sixth grade, they give you a test, they give everybody a test. And uh, if you read and do math at more than two grade levels above your grade level, you get this option of either taking enriched classes or doing something where they combine seventh and eighth grade into one year. So because I was born at the end of November, it meant that when I started ninth grade, I was 12. So that was really fun. Um, and uh, so, yeah, so I went off to college when I was 16. And, and so in many ways, I left home when I was 16. And, uh, and I never missed it. And they didn't miss me. I think they really were happy that they were able to get back to the life they had been living before they had children. Um, and uh, so to come back, you know, to be back in, in contact with one another, it was stressful. That's the end. Of that. <laughs> I think that book helped a lot of people. When I, when I, when I, when I people talk to me about it. Um, Looking at the don't talk to you about it too much. <laughs> hey, <laughs> they want to know. Do I know Ross Chast? And wasn't her book great? So it was oh. great. It was really yeah. great. Um, let's see. I'm looking at the questions. Oh, the difference between illustration and drawing. Well, sometimes we get asked the question: the il difference between illustration and cartoons, and that's like easier to answer because drawing is illustration and illustration is drawing or no illustration can be painting too or photography so illustration is, is illustrating something and drawing is drawing Umbrella. but cartoons are usually have an idea or a, an opinion to them you know right the cartoon right has the idea in it and illustration um is bouncing off something else that already exists right yeah like an article. Yeah. Also, I feel there's more pressure to make an illustration look nice, but I don't think that's true. Yeah. yeah. Cartoons. Yeah, I think that's definitely true though. An illustration is usually something that is related to a written piece. Um, and a drawing, you know, that doesn't necessarily have to relate to anything. I mean, it could be a figure drawing, you know, um, anything that's just... Uh, Do you guys have different modes for working when you're illustrating something rather than making a cartoon? Uh, yeah. I try, I think when, I, when I've, gotten illustration jobs, which I don't really do very much anymore. When I used to do them, I would try to figure out a way that they were closely related to cartoons only because it's more fun, you know? Um, and uh, I don't know, it's just, it's just more fun than like a straight, but I've never had to like illustrate you know, an annual report, I'd probably have to kill myself. Um, I mean, that would be really hard to sort of, you know, <laughs> look, it's a pie chart. <laughs> you know, I mean, look at this, look at this flow chart and just like put in fake boxes. And, you know, I, I would not, I'd have to take the kill fee. <laughs> yeah, like, I love flow charts. I love all kinds. I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is. Yeah, what's a flow chart? I know what a pie chart is. Oh, a flow chart. A flow chart is like, um, <laughs> you're making things up. You're making it up. It's different arrows. is going. A flow chart. A flow chart. Okay, I did a flow chart. I've done flow chart cartoons. I don't think they've run my. I have one. 
that's coming up, I think. I don't know when they're going to run it because it was before the pandemic and it has nothing to do with pandemics. But uh, I did one about a flow chart of like putting on a shirt and then the choice is like, um, you read the tag, you don't read the I tag. I love that one, yeah. Yeah, so it's like all these are things that sort of can happen depending on whether you choose like yes or no, or you read the tag, or you don't read the tag, and then the action after you read the tag. And sometimes the flow chart will like loop back to the first box, but. And they both end with like, go on with either read the tag or don't read the tag. If you don't read the tag, go on with your day. If you yes, do. Yes, yes. Series. yes. Things. Mm -hmm. I see. I see. Yeah. Can we talk about what we listen to while we work? Oh yeah, somebody asked Liza, that. what do you listen Nothing. to? Nothing. 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 Do you, Nothing. does your mind wander a lot? Yes. I try not to look at the computer. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but like, I do. Definitely. Do you listen to anything, Leah? Yeah, I listen to books on tape or podcasts. Ooh, and, while you're working? Oh yeah. How do you, how do you think of, no. No, I do. How do you think up ideas when somebody is talking to you? I don't know. Either I'm a fraud or I'm very good at tuning things out or I listen because I feel if I'm not listening to anything, I feel like I can't concentrate at all. It kind of, it like soothes me into being able to focus. Interesting. And I don't, if I'm really thinking, I don't take in any of the words, but um, I don't know. Like I, I work on comics most of my time and that's really slow work, although it shouldn't be, for me it is. I wish it weren't, I like retrace the same page. That's how I edit. Um, so there's like a lot of like really silly work and a little bit of thinking, like you probably spend 10 seconds thinking for every three minutes of not thinking. Mm -hmm. And like listening is how I keep myself from walking away after the 10 seconds. It works for me. I feel guilty about it. So you don't listen. About using I thought you did too. You feel guilty what, what, Ross? About using a rapidograph and not a dip pen. Really? <laughs> yeah. I feel guilty about not using a rapidograph. I use like a fake rip. I use like the, the modern. Oh, easy. that's not good. I use it on the iPad sometimes. Sometimes okay. I draw, draw like my that. ideas on an iPad. Here's Michael. Oh, hi, Michael. Oh, I'm killing a bee. I want to use one of those. I, I want to use a micron pen, but I hate them because. Oh, I, me too. You try a Muji. The Muji are great. So are them. they waterproof? Uh, I believe so, but they're not good on any for kind of texture in your paper. They'll like, it'll kill the pen somehow. Yeah, that's what happens with a micron. I hate microns because, sorry, not, I don't want to use the H word, but like, they are very okay i hold i've just learned that i hold a pen funny even for a left-handed person i hold it like that instead of like that yeah that's how i hold it. let me see isn't that how left hand people hold you, their you bend your wrist yeah and i lean it on my fourth finger yeah i lean it on my that but but do, do you rest the pen which finger oh, do you rest? third the What's ring no, these are really important know. things for people to know about. If yeah, yeah. Cartoonist, you have to know these things. Being a cartoonist, you need to know yeah. where your hand rests on the table. Right? Okay, so I and you, I hold it at a real angle. Yeah. Um, and and the microns are lateral. They have like, they have like a pillar of pen of like nib. You're supposed to hold it up and down or something. Whatever it is, like, does not work for how I hold a pen. I always get the edge, and I, like, it, it's, it doesn't work. Yeah. Yeah, plus the ink is, like, some, like, non... I really like a very, very, very dark black, and the ink is kind of not really black. It's sort of a few shades short of black. This is can really possible. Can I tell you the conspiracy theory I learned from ab about holding your hand like that yeah it's that you're you think like a righty you're a lefty who thinks like a righty you're holding your hand like that too because it's coming from the left side of your brain because a righty would hold their pen like that and a lefty should hold their pen like that but if you're going like that no it's so that you can see what you're writing 
<laughs> and also it's avoiding smearing as much as you can. Yeah, I don't smear it. Okay, time to talk about ink. Okay. Oh, I'll take that. This is my ink. Black magic. Magic. And if I'm drawing on paper, which I'm doing, I love being home a lot now because I'm drawing on paper more. And this is a pen. Ah, oh, dip. Yeah. I've always used dip pens How uh, do you uh, in, in my professional life. Why do you like black magic ink? And how, also, how do you clean, clean your nib? Uh, that's why I wear black tops so much, is I could just wipe my pen on my top. Really? Yeah, no, why really? It's a black shirt. <laughs> um, that's how I clean them. Was it just a white shirt? My shirt. And I like black magic because it's really black. It's really yeah. a, a deep, solid black. Does it, um, does it like clot ever in the pen, like too thick? Uh, well, I don't use a, I don't use a uh, mechanical pen. I no, use in, even in a dip pen, it always like, like it doesn't, you're, you write, you draw a little and then you're like, and oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Okay. yeah. So you have to be careful that you clean it every time after you put it down. Otherwise it'll dry and get caked on there. Yeah. So but I did use to, I, when I was in college, Roz, I used a rapidograph. Those were hot. Like when we were in our 20s, yeah, we were like a yeah. really new thing. Yeah. yeah. I, like I like them just because they don't smear. And uh, as a lefty, everything smears. And also as a lefty, you, a dip pen is hard because you're not pulling the nib, you're pushing it. So it doesn't come out. The ink right. doesn't. But not if you're. Oh, see, for me, it. Maybe I don't hold it like that. I don't know. I don't know how I'll, whatever it does, it pushes into the paper and the pen says to me, why are you doing this? You're stupid. So, you I know. Have trouble, I feel like I've complained to you about this before, but I have trouble writing with a rapidograph. And I, I think because the little hair sticks out and drags. Yeah. Yeah, that little hair, it's all very annoying. Do you have to pick up the, you pick up the nib every time you're, like you really pick it up off the paper when you're not trying. I don't know. <laughs> you probably don't, people don't even know what a rapidograph is anymore, right? It's like this pen that has a little, you said hair, but it's a very fine wire, uh, wire that comes out of the bottom and the, it comes with the ink, right? Yeah. Ink, right? Yeah. It's like what rolling ball pens replaced. Like before there were rolling ball pens, people used to use, I guess artists used to use rapidographs. They have this very even line. Mm -hmm. Did better, but easier. Let me go to uh, Kino Kinoya. I, think, I don't know how to pronounce it. That Japanese um, book. I heard it just closed and I'm so sorry. Did it close? Let me Google this. Japanese, like Japanese bookstore in Midtown, but the lower level is all stationary supplies and art supplies. And that is a mm -hmm. really great place. They have like a bazillion types of pens and brushes and inks and. Huh, I'm sorry, it's gone because I never heard of it. I don't think it's gone. I think this is not true. Oh, oh. oh. what's it called? It says Kinokuniya on West 49th Street is closing, but the one we go to isn't on West 49th Street. Yeah, the one we go to is on 6th and like 41st or something. Yeah, but Kino, Kino Kuya? K-I-N-O-K-U-N. Yeah. Let me see. Well, you tell me later. K-N-O-K-U-Y-A. Right? Yeah. Should we answer more questions? You, you guys want to, let's see. Um, you guys use jetpens.com? Yes, I do. Okay. I no, love that. Jet, jet pens? Yeah, Google, look it up. It's so good. Yeah, they, they have um, tons of types of pens and inks. That's and great. I love these resources, guys. I use Dick Blick. Oh, Dick Blick is good. Mm -hmm. I get paper from them. This is fun. There's a really good art supply store near in Brooklyn um, called, like, oh, shoot, Scott, do you remember what it's called? Like, crap, on 2nd Street and between 4th and 5th Avenue. And it's like a co-op and it's huge and it's amazing. Wow. 
Great. It is good paper. Did Pearl paint a lot of business? business? Did Pearl, Pearl paint Pearl a lot of business? business a while mm -hmm. though, yeah. They were like not good in the last couple of years, I think. I hadn't been. It's so somebody, let's see. Um, do you ever feel insecure telling people that you made cartoons for a living? Was it only until you got hired by the New Yorker or other publications that you felt more confident sharing this with people? No. I was I always took it as a point of pride that I was a cartoonist. No, didn't you? Because there are not many of us, particularly women. Did you know you were a cartoonist till you sold cartoons though? No, I, I knew I was a cartoonist before I sold. I felt like I just couldn't say what I was until I started making money and I was very, very ashamed. Um, oh, really? Yeah. Of being a cartoonist? I was just, I, I was like, am I an artist? Am I a writer? Am I a cartoonist? And it didn't matter because I hadn't, I wasn't making a living. That's how I felt at RISD. I felt embarrassed about being a cartoonist at RISD. Then I didn't care. Yeah, I felt embarrassed being, I called myself a writer in art school because I was so bad at, I, I'm a good artist, but a bad fine artist. And yeah, it was like, they, they had respect for writers, but they definitely didn't have respect for cartoonists. No, no. There's I think that's no. still sort of true. I think more yeah. people, I th don't you think that's still sort of true, even though people respect us on one level, writers, writers get more respect than we do. Okay. Yeah, I think so. I mean, think about like the caption contest. It's, you know, I always try to think, what if they had, I don't know, like- Poetry contest. <laughs> who? A poetry contest. A poetry yeah. contest. The last line. <laughs> like, like, I don't know, line. like some famous poet. And then, yeah, you put, you make the last line. Yeah. You know? That'd be so, so delightful. It would, it would. Or some fiction writer, like you make up the last, how will this story end? You know, so. But we've, cut, we've, got, we've come to, to terms with the, with, with the contest, right? I mean, I have, yeah, but I felt that way in the beginning. I was like insulted, but now I'm like, it, 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 I think hopefully most people know that we don't work that way. We don't like do a drawing and then caption it. Um, and so, but it brings them closer to us. Like I understand that. I don't like it, but yeah. I, I understand what it is. And I'm sure it's, you know, it brings people in and whatever, but I really, you know, I do feel it's sort of misunderstanding what of what it is we do. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it kind of, it narrows what we do. It's yeah. like a very specific kind of cartoon and a very specific way of thinking cartoon. And yeah. it's not necessarily how any of us cartoon, maybe. Also, it may, means it makes the drawings all interchangeable, which is, I think, in some ways, the worst part of all. It's just like, you might as well just have a robot do the drawings. Right, because we're not, we're not doing illustrated jokes. It's just yeah, yeah. They all, I don't know. I mean, for me, the, the, what I've always liked about cartoons is, uh, you know, the, the variation in styles and how uh, the comic voice is, uh, goes through that style of drawing. You know, you think of Charles Adams or George Booth or Mary Petty or Helen Hokanson or you guys or, um, it's not just a generic drawing, right. you know? Ed Korn's drawings are totally different from Peter Arno's and as they should be, you know, but a caption contest makes it all like, you know, just yeah. like cartoon And yeah. there it is. So I don't know. Can we talk about how do you balance the feedback of rejection? I'm reading um, with your own instincts. In other words, how do you not let rejection alter your personal style or voice? My answer is I do, like I, re I really take feedback into account to the point where I sometimes don't know what my real 
voice is, but I'm lucky that I, I think I do have a very strong voice and it comes out whether I, I try very, very hard to just do what is wanted because I want to make money and I want to be able to pay rent and I want people to understand what I draw and I don't take for granted that they will. Like I should, I should take for granted more than I do. I have like low confidence in my relatability. Um, that's my answer. Yeah. yeah, it's hard not to uh, take rejection, you know, to heart. Um, I think for me, I don't really have another plan to do this. You know, I don't, I've never had, you know, plan B or another job. Um, so doing this even with rejection um, is better than not doing anything, which is what would happen really. But if you like sell, if you sell more cartoons about birds, uh, about birds than you sell cartoons about cats, are you going to start making more cartoons about birds than you want to? Pro it will probably creep in there, but um, only to a certain point. It's kind of like trying to change yourself. Yeah. And at a certain point, um, it, it's not possible. I think it's wise not to try too hard. Yeah. I yeah. Like that. And yet, you know, the, the truth is that f for all of us is that making a living is part of, you know, the equation. So, uh, I feel like I had to fake a lot in order to get any, to get in anywhere, like to get into the New Yorker, to get into publishing. I think I did a, like as, as much fakery as I could, as much channeling other people's styles as I could. But now I don't think I have to anymore. And in fact, I think it holds me back to do that. I work way slower. I'm less engaged when I'm trying so hard to speak in a different voice. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not really, it's hard to, it's hard for me to speak in a different voice because it doesn't seem, um, I don't know how to find the humor in it, you know. Uh, it's hard enough to figure out what it is you want to say and how to say it than try to even pretend to say it in somebody else's voice, you know. Um. It's so, I mean, it's so different. Liana, you, you've been doing cartoons in, in a time with social media and Roz and I started out, out without that. So like when we started, you didn't get any feedback whatsoever. At least I didn't get any from Lee Lorenz, the art editor. I mean, maybe if he bought something, he'd say, move the cap to this side of the drawing you know, or maybe change that word. And I'd say, yeah, okay, sure. But uh, you didn't get any feedback. And I think in some ways that has helped. And I, and I keep, I say to people like, it's a, it's a really excruciating uh, business we've chosen because with the New Yorker, you submit a bunch of cartoons every week and they either buy one or they don't. And so you have all these rejection, rejected cartoons, like tons and tons of them, but you do so many of them and you're doing um, your, you're um, you're drawing for yourself. In bottom line, you know, you're not yeah. drawing for an editor. You're drawing what you think is funny, and not what you think somebody else thinks. You can't ignore public opinion or what you think the editor might wa want. I mean, that's in there a little bit. But anyway. Yeah. Well, I don't want to have to, you know, sell our house or go on welfare. That's why I do illustration jobs and yeah, like, uh, wow, do yeah. Yeah. I don't want to, I don't know, it would be so horrible. But I don't think you have to worry about that, Roz, anymore. Oh, I do. Sure I do. do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do. Um, you know, it's, uh, what did Sam, Sam Gross? Oh, yeah. He, he, Sam Gross has had so many, the cartoonist Sam Gross, he's had so many wonderfully wise um, things to say. Uh, and I, I remember when he once said to me something like, 
You know, every, when everything's going along great, everything's fine, just remember, at any minute, it could all turn to shit. So, <laughs> you know, that's, that's the uh -huh. Sam Gross philosophy of life. And, you know, uh, he and I must come from the same branch of the tree. Well, that's what my father used to tell me, not quite in those words, but he'd say, you never know what's going to happen. You, know? you never know what's going to happen. It's true. I mean, who would have predicted that, you know, in May of 2020, we would be here. I, you know, I haven't come into the city since the end of February. And, uh, you know, be out, when you go outside, you have to wear a face mask. Who would have thought this? And at rush hour, the subway would be empty. This is absurd. So, you know, or Donald Trump would be president. Well, yeah, that's even more absurd. Yeah, yeah, so anyway. Um, well, we answered most of the questions. That's pretty good. That's good. Okay. You wanna play some ukulele, Ross? Oh, the ukulele is over there. Okay. It's so far away, the other side of the room. Anything else? Uh, let's see. Somebody's saying, do it, do it. I don't know what they mean. Do what? <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, maybe we should just sign off. Okay. It's been an hour. Yeah. Um, okay. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Thanks, everybody, for coming, all you people out there. And uh, thanks to the Society of Illustrators. It's a great museum. If you guys have never been there, you should go as soon as it opens, right? Okay. Not you guys, the people watching. Oh, oh there's Leanna. Okay. okay. Bye, Roz. Bye.